Hi everyone, in this video we'll be looking at the world of tech for 10 home education resources that we've picked up over the last year or two while home educating our three kids. There's a mix of free and paid resources and whether you're new to home education or been at it a little while, there should be at least one tip in here that's useful to you. If you're a subscriber, stick around for a bonus 11th tip at the end with an extra little surprise. Links for all of the resources will be in the description, so let's go. Number one is Twinkle. Now lots of you will already know about Twinkle, but for those of you that don't, Twinkle is an enormous resource for educational content ranging from early years learning all the way up to key stage four. It's used by parents and also by teachers in mainstream schools. So there's lots of well-validated content on there. There are plenty of free resources there, and if you find them useful, there are a range of subscriptions going from about four quid a month all the way up to about nine pounds a month. Twinkle was one of the very first things that we purchased when we started home educating and we haven't looked back since. One suggestion we give you though is to have a plan when you go onto Twinkle with an idea of what you want to find. It can easily get overwhelming if you start wading through the content that they've got because there is a lot of it. It's at its best when you already have a clear idea in your mind of what you're looking for and you just need some activities to build out a learning plan around that. Tip number two is an iPad and I know that might be pretty expensive but hear me out. Once we started home education, we knew the kids would need a computer. So we wanted to keep as much of their work as possible, but we didn't want to have to have a house full of filing cabinets and the paperwork and uh, the environmental impact of having loads of paper around isn't great. So keeping the work on a computer or a tablet made a ton of sense. Obviously, once you have an iPad, there are thousands of educational apps that you can access, but just learning to use and engage technology is a hugely important skill in and of itself. We bought the cheapest iPad at the time, it was about 329 pounds, and it does the job perfectly. Number three is a selection of educational apps that are worth mentioning. So the Tiny Bobs series of apps are excellent and cover lots of topics from skyscrapers and physics all the way through to the human body and the ocean. It's really well made and definitely worth checking out. Duolingo is a free language app with options for loads and loads of languages. And you don't need an iPad for Duolingo, you can go directly to their website and start learning from there. ChessKid is another free online chess app and again also directly available from their website with free lessons for kids on how to learn to play chess. Also look out for some of Twinkle's apps, Twinkle Robotics and Twinkle Little Red Coding Club for some STEM learning activities as well. For older kids, check out iTunes U, which is a resource in iPads and iPhones, but it's filled with free courses from top universities around the world. One example is I've been looking at an introduction to psychology from Yale University, so incredible value that that's on there and available for free. And suddenly £329 for an iPad doesn't seem so bad, does it? Let me know what you think in the comments. Number four is an Apple Pencil, and great as it is to learn typing skills on the iPad, we wanted to make sure the kids were developing their handwriting skills as well. Also, research has shown that writing by hand improves learning and recall, so clearly very important for education. In reality, you probably don't need Apple's Pencil. There are lots of different iPad pens out there. I'm just a bit of a tech geek and quite like Apple tech, don't tell Lou. Also, Ted's sensory disorder means that the touch of paper is really uncomfortable to him. So often we'll download worksheets from Twinkle or elsewhere and we'll put them on the iPad or perhaps photograph a page out of one of his workbooks and then we'll put that image into an app called Notability and that lets him draw on the picture as if he were drawing on paper. Aside from allowing the kids to draw on pictures, Notability lets them type, sketch and handwrite notes. It'll even read their handwriting so we can then search for it later or convert it into text for other use. You can also use Apple's free inbuilt notes app, which now has many of the features that I've just mentioned, but as we were already using Notability at the time, we've, we've stuck with it. Number five, and the very last point on iPads is an app called Swift Playgrounds. Now this comes free with iPads, but it's definitely worth a mention because it's free and because it's a wonderful introduction to the world of coding and computer programming. The way it's designed is really smart and engaging and it challenges kids to create instructions to move a character around a virtual world and complete specific tasks, all while learning how to use coding tools. Ted and I have spent hours and hours working through some of the levels together and it was really nice to start learning and developing a new skill together. I honestly believe that coding and computer programming will be as important as maths and English over the next five years, so apps like this are absolute godsend. Number six is Reading Eggs and Math Seed. So these are two subscriptions that come together from the same company and we use them throughout 2019 and through 2020. They do a really great job of turning learning into a game with lots of certificates and eggs to collect for the kids. And they genuinely get excited about unlocking new rewards and certificates. We don't use it at the moment, but that's only because the boys outgrew some of the features. It's designed typically for three to nine year olds, but there are some modules for up to 13. 
at the time of recording, there's actually a flash sale on their website at the moment for 30% off an annual subscription to Reading Eggs and Math Seeds and a link to their website is in the description. Number seven is The Night Zookeeper. This is an online creative writing service where kids are challenged to write and play educational games. Their writing is marked and assessed by real tutors who give great feedback in a really human way and encourage them to just develop and express themselves a little bit more in the written word. Our kids absolutely love it. We actually talked about The Night Zookeeper in our last video and we'll link that up in the cards and also in the description. And our viewers can get 52% off an annual subscription if they sign up using our partner link, which is also in the description. Number eight is a service called BorrowBox. So just imagine your local library, but all of it on your phone or your tablet. That's what BorrowBox is. You sign in with the ID and password from your local library, and then you can access all of the eBooks and audio books that are available through your library completely free. Alpha uses this daily. He's, uh, what he uses is reading time before bed, and it's absolutely incredible. We'll leave a link in the description. Number nine, Chester Zoo have been running a series of virtual zoo visits recently. We've watched a few of them live and you can see some of that on our previous videos, but all of the videos are available on their website. It's great to hear about the animals directly from the zookeepers and if you're anything like me when you actually go to the zoo when we were allowed to, um, you'd be inclined to wait around and listen to their talks at feeding time, but it can be a bit of a pain with queuing and trying to get to the front, especially when it's a bit cold and the kids want to get on. So it's great to be able to do that online and really listen and hear what, what's actually being said. But as well as the virtual tours, there are loads of educational resources on the website for you to download or print and work through. So it's a brilliant resource. And if your kids are into nature and wildlife as much as ours, they will absolutely love it. And finally, number 10, the Wildlife Trust have an amazing education page and it is packed full of activities that's perfect for this time of year. Now we can start getting outside because the weather's warming up a little bit. On top of that, we found a list of nature webcams from the Wildlife Trust just last year. We showed a few of those on a previous video, which I'll link to but it's live webcams in nature reserves and near bird's nests, so you can get really, really close and see what's going on with those animals, it's incredible. So for the 56% of you that are watching who are subscribed, here is secret tip number 11. If you're not subscribed, don't worry, it's fairly easy to do, just click down there and subscribe to us. Number 11 is BBC Bite Size, which was already an amazing resource, but it's really, really stepped up over the last few months. Our kids have been watching some of the sessions on the TV, but the website is great and a really, really wide ranging resource as well. Also, if you take a look at the links we've brought into this description you might recognize a couple of people on there we were delighted to help out with the homeschool hacks and really hope that our tips were useful we'd love to hear your homeschool hacks as well so let us know in the comments so that's it for this week and hope that was useful if it was please leave a like and let us and youtube know that this is useful content and we'll see you in the next video